on the organic BC cover cropping tour of British Columbia, we stopped in at Holberg Farms, located in Agassiz, a small dairy farming community in the Fraser Valley. Dairy farming is one of the prime commodities in the Lower Mainland, and there is an interesting cover cropping system farmers are adopting that has both environmental and economic benefits to the producers. Relay cropping is gaining traction as a valid practice to build soil health, help with nutrient leaching, all the while providing the cattle with a nutritious feed. It is the practice of seeding an Italian ryegrass cover or relay crop within a corn crop. Once the corn is harvested in the fall for corn silage for the cattle, the Italian ryegrass takes over and itself is harvested the following spring as a feed silage for the cattle. My name is uh, Alex Schwichtenberg. And I'm Holger Schwichtenberg and together with my wife Catherine and Alex and two other employees we farm in Agassiz, BC. We're a dairy farm. We milk between 130 and 160 Holsteins. We farm roughly 180 acres split down the middle between grass and corn. Because we are a rotational grazing farm for many, many years, we never grew corn. And in 1986, the herd had expanded. Um, getting the animals to and from pasture as you have a larger herd it becomes more and more with the weather the wet weather and stuff so we decided to go to confined housing and growing corn so in 1986 we start had our first corn crop 40 acres and my father was always a huge proponent of of the cover crop program especially if you've ever been in Agassiz October November with the winds it's very discouraging to see your topsoil leaving in the in the, in the form of a large dust cloud heading towards Vancouver. So we've always been strong proponents of the cover crop. So we traditionally just planted the fall rye and then it was a fall rye with together with the winter wheat. But also in the early years, it was something we simply plowed under. It was not part of our feeding program. When you're victim to the wind and weather, sometimes it gets a bit complicated or gets a bit tight for time to get your cover crop in the fall, especially if your spring planting didn't go as early. So we are looking for something that covered us off a bit. Uh, yeah, about three years ago, my uh, dad saw these phenomenal cover crops at the UBC Research Station, so he uh, stopped on by and asked, asked a few questions and ran into Gary Telford, was it? Gary, uh, Gary came by the farm and he was telling us about the interseeding and about the uh, planting the cover crops between the corn rows, and uh, yeah, he got really interested in it because it you know, saves a lot of time in the fall and it uh, looks like a phenomenal cover crop. So we, we gave that a shot about three years ago, you can see behind me. Um, we've been doing it ever since. We had a few ups and downs, but uh, I think for the most part it's, uh, it's worked really well and especially this year with, uh, with irrigation and a good growing season we're really excited to see what it could bring in spring. About the six leaf stage we actually drive through the cornfield seeding the grass, Italian rye in this case, between the corn rows. And it's, and it's not broadcast, it's actually, it's actually drilled, proper, into drilled into the ground. And a couple of things, that you've now got your cover crop planted and secondly in the fall when you harvest your corn you actually have an actively growing cover crop so your manure application you cover off the bases by saying I actually have an actively growing crop and it's one less work passage that you have to do in the fall because your cover crop is already in the ground. It's growing between the corn now um, and then once the corn shades over uh, it should stop growing and then it shouldn't really start growing again until spring. And it, and it does take a bit of a beating when you harvest. Right? You've got the big trucks going through and it does get then a light coating of manure, maybe 5,000 gallons an acre in the fall. And then, yeah, in the spring, you then fertilize again or put manure on it. And again, when winter does play a role, temperatures and stuff, but it was, it's actually quite resilient. And even after the first year, we were quite pleasantly um, surprised at the results. And we've also found that despite that you're interseeding in between the corn rows, there's very actually debris and stuff actually, and it's not like the corn stubble comes through again. There's not much of it there. So we're, we're, if, if it all works out, we're happy campers, but we're really only year three. And yeah, talk to us again in 10 years. After some good spring growth, the Italian rye relay crop is harvested and made into silage, a nutritionally packed feed for the cows. Holger and Alex talk about when they will pull the relay crop off the field. Based off of when we planted this, it'll probably be April, May-ish. Well, end of, end of April, April. Going into May, maybe. But you don't want to leave it too late because you need to get your next corn crop in the ground, right? So again, weather plays a role. And, when, and yeah, and how's it, how dry are the fields? Remember, it's not an established grass seed, so you, need, you can't be out there in a mud bath. Dairy farms generate a lot of manure, and in British Columbia, the Agricultural Environmental Management Code regulates the quantity of manure permitted for spreading on the fields. It also specifies the time frames during which it can be applied. This regulatory effort aims to reduce nutrient leaching into aquifers. 
The practice of relay cropping can play a significant role in achieving this goal. It allows dairy farmers to apply manure to an already established crop in the fall, ensuring that more nutrients, particularly nitrogen and phosphorus, will be taken up, compared to spreading it on a recently seeded field. With the environmental regulations which I support, I am actually spreading manure in the fall on an actively growing crop. And again, we all have storage containers. We're not allowed to spread November, December, January, but you know, the huge cost here. And again, you give, the, you give your crop a bit of a boost and you are applying manure to a growing crop. We have our grass yield, we have this, so we're covered. We can put a light skim everywhere. We're not pounding it on. You're, you're keeping the soil on your land, not in the river. And uh, you got 30 inches of space between each row of corn. Why not do something? Other people are attempting other things. They're planting peas and beans. They're growing underneath. They don't actually hinder the corn in any way, shape or form, but it's extra tonnage and extra protein. No, it's a, it's a good nutritional package. And again, with a mixer wagon, you can add if there's any you know, protein shortages or something. It, it goes into a mix. You got your alfalfa, your straw. So it's not a single component, whatever, right? Whatever the silage ends up lacking, we, yeah. just, we just add yeah, it yeah, after yeah. the fact. Yeah. And they do like it, right? With the price of feed nowadays, anything that you can grow on your own farm Right, really helps your bottom line. And it's so neat really, say in April, March, and you see this green carpet. It is a nice feeling. A nice cover crop yeah. is the luscious looking field you'll yeah. see. Right. My name is Derek Hunt. I work for Agriculture Canada. Uh, this is the Agassiz Research and Development Center. So the work we did with uh, relay cropping, we started several years ago. The idea is it's an extension of cover cropping. With cover cropping, you're up against the problem of can you get your cover crop in early enough in the fall after your main crop? In this case, it's uh, corn silage is what the main crop is in the valley. So we were always faced with this timeline of pushing the planting date of the cover crop after the corn. And often you just didn't get it planted early enough or well enough that didn't provide the winter cover that you would need from to a good performing cover crop. Then we came up with the idea of what we call relay cropping, which is really an interseeding. And we tried a mix of species and varieties of crops in silage corn to see if they would work interseeded into that corn with the idea as soon as the corn is harvested, those crops would be there in the fall to, to kind of take over the, uh, re the race, of, so to speak, of soaking up any residual soil nitrate was the initial uh, impetus of it. And then they would be, have a head start in the fall for doing good ground cover. So we tried many things such as uh, winter cereals, we did the rye, winter wheat, triticale, uh, lot, looked at lots of different types of grasses, uh, clovers, brassicas, and the ones that worked the best was red clover and Italian ryegrass, or actually at the time it was, it was annual ryegrass. So then we delved into that more and focused mostly on the annual ryegrass because it produced a good cover in the corn, survived in the shade of the corn, and then when the corn was harvested, it was there looking terrible because the harvester had trampled it to the ground, but it could recover from that and then it provided fall cover. So normally the, uh, the corn silage is planted anywhere from very late April through May. Uh, ideally it's planted in the first two weeks of May and we wait until the corn is at a, anywhere from a three leaf, which is collar open stage, up to a six leaf collar open stage and then we interseed the relay crop, in this case Italian ryegrass, into that corn and that is usually anywhere from early June to early July. And then right after that, the canopy of the corn closes in, and under that shade of the canopy, the Italian ryegrass seems to do well. It can tolerate the shade, it can tolerate the competition from the corn, but it sits there in a kind of a, not dormant stage, but a very low, low growing stage. When the corn is harvested in anywhere from early September to the end of September, that relay crop is usually squashed to the ground by the harvesting equipment, but the Italian ryegrass or ryegrasses in general have the ability to pick up from that, and then they'll start growing usually a couple, week to two weeks after the corn has been removed, and then they'll grow through to the fall, providing a good ground cover, soaking up excess nitrate from the soil, uh, protecting the soil from wind and, and uh, water erosion, and then in the spring becoming a feed crop. So that would be that Italian would then be harvested the following spring, usually late April, into early May as, an, as a silage crop before rotating back into corn again. Yeah, so the Italian ryegrass, if it's harvested by the dairy farmers for a feed, is usually harvested as silage. So that means it's cut, maybe wilted for a day or direct cut, and then it goes as an ensiled product to be fed out later in the year. Now the quality of the ryegrass is usually good. It's um, a, a good quality, good protein, 
highly digestible forage feed and the farmers find that the cows milk better off of that and that the milk fat content goes up. Yeah, so the adoption of these sorts of technologies will depend upon the availability of the equipment, availability of seed, and how it works into a, an already existing dairy's production system. So it takes time to come up with the, the equipment and the expertise and the knowledge to, to adopt better management practices, and really cropping is no different. It's a bit more complicated than, um, say, fall planting of a cover crop, where you just put the the cover crop in after the corn is harvested. You just need a seed drill or you can broadcast. With relay crop in, timing is, is, is more restricted. You have to go in at a certain stage, like three leaf to six leaf of the corn, and you need different equipment. So the, a seed drill would have to be modified to fit between the corn rows, or you have a specialized interseeder. So now the advantages are for the fall and winter is that it provides ground cover. So it protects the soil from surface erosion, that could be from water erosion or wind erosion. It soaks up any kind of surplus nitrate that could be in the soil. And in the spring, it can act as a very green manure, so it can be incorporated into the soil as a green manure, or it can be harvested as a crop if it's left till late April, early May.